an advantage of having a pet trust as opposed to just handing a bunch of money to somebody is that only as much money as the pet actually needs will go out of the estate. But then you have, you know, the hassle and the expense of administering a pet trust. You have a trustee who should be compensated and all that kind of thing. Welcome to Absolute Trust Talk with your host, Kirsten Howe. Absolute Trust Talk brings you tips, tools, advice, and interviews to help you build a reliable knowledge base on estate planning, business, and finance to start preparing for your future today. Hello, and welcome to Absolute Trust Talk. I am Kirsten Howe, and I'm here with Madison Gunn, our associate attorney here at Absolute Trust Council. Today, we are going to talk about estate planning involving pets, which is going to be a a very fun topic. Madison said to me on Monday, whoa, it was a great weekend for celebrity deaths. We had a few (laughs) celebrity deaths over the weekend, and you know we like to talk about that. And we will a little bit at the end of this episode, but first you have to have the medicine, and then you get the sugar. (laughs) So Madison... Why don't you get us started? Yeah. When we first started talking about this as a topic for the show, Queen Elizabeth had passed away and it had been brought to our attention that she had stopped breeding her beloved corgis several years ago because she did not want to die and leave all these dogs, uh, you know, in the palace. And she stopped. I think she had had one dog left. And but that didn't stop her son, Prince Andrew, from giving her a dog, uh, you know, at the end, towards the end of her life. And yeah. And so he now has that dog. So he, it was a, that gift got given back so yeah, he could take care of it. <laughs> but I mean, she had a lot more than just corgis. She bred horses and raised horses. And so one of the things to point out, and I know it's private because she was the queen, but it's likely that any horses that she owned that were not owned by the crown, but, but owned by Elizabeth were given to her family through a will. And so these are things that come up for us routinely in estate planning and dealing with people's pets. And so we thought that would be a great thing to talk about. Yeah. And, you know, estate planning for your pets is important for a number of reasons. I mean, the first one, of course, is that you love your pets and you, just like a child, you worry about what's going to happen to them when you're gone. So you can plan for your pets. I think one of the things that maybe people don't necessarily think about is how long some animals can live, right? I mean, dogs are anywhere from eight to 16 years, although, you know, the longer, the rarer, and, you know, the bigger the dog, the shorter the lifespan. But the oldest dog on record is a 28-year-old Australian cattle dog. So that's like a medium-sized dog. And chihuahuas routinely live 12 to 20 years. I have two of those, so I might need to address that in my estate plan. (laughs) Yeah. One, I think, is going to live longer than all of us. And he's like, (laughs) so, I mean, he just keeps going, Um, (laughs) you know. And then for you, you know, cats can live 12 to 18 years. Oldest cat on record is 28. Your cats are three, two, Two. three. Yeah, Yeah, two, yeah. yeah. But this conversation made me think about that because I haven't really actively done anything about my pets. I have two children, one of whom wouldn't be able to take my cats because he has a dog that we never let his dog near our cats. So so I have to give that some thought what I would think would happen. I hope I survive my cats. But you never know. There's several other pets. Those are the most common, right? Dogs and cats right. is the most common family pet. But there are other things to think about koi fish 25 to 35 years i mean for a glorified goldfish i thought that was very it's impressive fun. just a fish I know. <laughs> cockatiels which are parrots that you can get at pet smart 16 to 25 years my mom had a cockatiel from before i was born that died well after i turned 21 so i mean they live quite a while in captivity she has a parrots live up to 50 to 65 years the bigger the parrot typically the longer the lifespan which is the reverse of dogs uh, my mom just this week put down a parrot that she had for 27 years. <gasps> so, I mean, yeah. and I, I highly doubt she's going to get another one. But if she does, we'll have to have that estate planning conversation. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know. that's like the Queen Elizabeth thing, you know, do yeah. I'm, I'm this old. Should I really be getting another one of these pets at this point in my life? Yeah. Yeah. I was just impressed that I was like, I don't remember having that bird when I was that like, young. I was like, really? 27 years? Like, that <laughs> doesn't seem like it. 
Rabbits can live seven to 10 years, snakes, nine to 40 years. So again, they're the bigger the snake, the longer the lifespan. <gasps> yeah. Lizards, three to 20 years, same thing, bigger, the longer. So like iguanas would live a lot longer. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I see commonly is turtles and tortoises can live 40 to 45 years. And like a tortoise lives longer than a turtle. So the tortoises live on land, turtle lives in the water typically. My husband had those growing up because they lived in the desert. They were wild, but they would burrow in the yards and, and things like that. And uh, they live a long time. I mean, you see those big tortoise at the zoo. Yeah. Yeah, at the Oakland Zoo. There's the plenty one. of hundred year old tortoises. So I would imagine that that's a possibility. Yeah. Chickens, you know, that's been a huge thing since COVID, right? Everyone's got chickens eight to 10 years. You know, wow. and obviously the more care, you know, all of this is contingent upon regular vet care. <laughs> so <laughs> I know like, you know, exotic pets, they don't typically go to the vet unless there's a problem. So right. that's common. It's not like right. with dogs and they cats where they get their shots. Yeah. Yeah. And then out here, you know, it's kind of rural or um, ponies and horses, 25 to 33 years and ponies live longer. But in, you know, if they're not being ridden, they're just out to pasture, they have a good setup, they could live quite a while. Yeah. If you think about leaving someone a horse, that's an expense. That's a big expense. Yeah. yeah. I think the horses are the big one where we have to have a really serious conversation about money because they are very expensive animals. Yeah. And if it's not going to family that's getting your house that has the stables and the land, there's a whole slew of uh, right. expenses right, right. that have to be discussed. Okay. So planning for your pets is important. There are a variety of different ways that you can do that. A couple of the common ones that we tend to use most often, I mean, the one that I use most often, I would say, is we designate someone to take our animals and we also leave a certain amount of money for that person if they will take the animals. And so oftentimes we'll say, you know, $5,000 per pet if you'll take my pets. That's a common one and it's pretty easy to administer that for the trustee, I think. Yeah. And a lot of times it might be that we either goes to an individual who's going to take care of the pet, or it could go to a rescue who will right. rehome or an individual who will rehome the pet for you. Right. Right. So. But oftentimes I think it's important to include that financial component just to make sure that it happens, that people are incentivized to do the help. And the other thing... <laughs> You know, if you're talking about an individual, you got to ask them ahead of time. Don't just assume that they would be happy to do that for you. You yeah. got to ask them ahead of time. Yeah. then the financial component's good because at least they're not saying no because they can't afford it, you know, yeah. particularly if it's something like a horse or something like right. that. Right. right. And it's important to think about that in terms of what the animal is going to be. You know, a cat, $5,000 maybe that's okay to take a 10 year old cat, but to take a five year old horse, you know, you're going to have to make it significantly more attractive, I think, financially. Yeah. Um, One of the things we've done to combat that is letting it be the dollar amount be at the trustee's discretion, depending on what pets you have on the time of your death and what their age. expected life expectancy yeah. is. Yeah. And their health too. Yes. You yeah, know, you get a cat with kidney disease or diabetes. That's a lot yeah. more than the vet bills are going to be a lot more than yeah. other cats or or the dental bills in our in both <sighs> both your and I's pet right. situations. <laughs> yeah, we each have a pet with not so great, <laughs> but we love them anyway. Yeah. But you can also rather than just giving your animal outright to somebody along with a pile of money you can set up a pet trust. And those are recognized by the state of California in the probate code. There's a the whole section about pet trusts. So what would a pet trust say? Yeah, typically it's similar to the situation where you're giving money and the pet to somebody, but it's being held in trust and managed by a trustee. The trustee may or may not be the person actually taking care of the pet. So it might pay for someone to take care of the pet. It might pay for housing for the pet. I mean, it depends on, you know, obviously how much money somebody has, but pretty much the sky's the limit in that regard. So if they want to set money aside, you have a professional trustee who's managing everything for that pet for their life. Yeah. 
And the trust can say, and should say, once all of these animals that I'm leaving have passed away, whatever money's left in that trust, you're going to tell us where you want that to go. Yeah. So that's kind of an advantage of having a pet trust as opposed to just handing a bunch of money to somebody is that only as much money as the pet actually needs will go out of the estate. But then you have, you know, the hassle and the expense of administering a pet trust. You have a trustee who should be compensated and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So we don't see people setting up pet trusts quite as often, but I do think it's more common in a situation where it's a an animal that's going to be very expensive. That's- yeah, I suspect that might be more common with like show dogs and paper dogs that, you know, they have a, what do you want to call it, a, a value? <laughs> more, more than like they have an actual financial value right. as opposed to just, you know, the cost it would be to take care of them. But they have the ability to earn their own income. To earn money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'm sure that is true. We haven't had too many of those show dogs through our practice, but. We have seen some. I've definitely seen rights to some frozen specimens yes. like, through our trusts. <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. Not, not a pet, but yeah. a future possible pet. Yes. <laughs> and I imagine that would be the same for any animal that can earn money, like, you know, pets that are, or not pets, but animals that are in show business and things of that nature that they use in movies and TV. Oh, yeah. 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 But, and those are technically someone's pet i mean i suppose under the law they are their personal property and even if you're just using them to make money they technically are your pet i guess okay so are we ready to start talking about celebrity and celebrity and their pet planning always (laughs) (laughs) forte she's i know very good at following celebrities and what they get up to (laughs) <laughs> yeah, this one was fun because I didn't know about a lot of them. I mean, I knew about one, obviously, and then some of them I just didn't even know about. So the very first one, which I didn't know about, you told me, was Carl Lagerfeld. When he oh, died yeah. a few years ago, he has this cat, Choupet. Is that how you say it? It's, yeah. I'm sure it's uh-huh. French, so I don't know. A Burmese cat in France that he left $1.5 million to. So we're not sure how he left the money to her. In Germany, where he is from, you could actually leave money to your animal. In, oh. mo- in most countries, including France, you cannot. So you have to leave it to someone to take care of the pet or to a pet trust or a charity, but you can't leave money. I mean, how is that pet going to deposit the them? Pet can't, you can't do that. Cash checks. Yeah. yeah. Can't, can't pay for food. Yeah. You yeah. have to leave it to a human. Yeah. That's... But it's interesting that in Germany, you can. Ah, I wonder. That doesn't it needs seem a, It needs a guardianship now. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the guardianship. And so somebody has to go do a guardianship. <laughs> I imagine that's how that Maybe. would have to be. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm like, does the animal <laughs> file taxes? You know, like, what if you have, I mean, in this case, Chupet, she makes her own money too. She has her own income. So that has she to be was, reported on right. someone's tax return. Right. Especially she, in Europe. She was famous in her own right. Yeah. 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 Especially in Europe. That's interesting. Okay. Well, okay. And we all know, well, those of us of a certain age anyway, (laughs) know about the, the most famous perhaps at bequest of all time, Leona Helmsley. Yeah. So she was a famous New York city landlord, right? Yes. Like a real estate magnate. Um, Um, Yeah. Yeah. She left $12 million to her dog, Trouble, a Maltese, and she cut out her two grandchildren and left her dog $12 million. So, of course, they sued, right? They got nothing to lose. So that was litigation. So anytime you leave a significant amount of money to your pet and not your family, I'm sure that will ensue. People will be unhappy. Yeah. yeah. And they'll try. Um, yeah. And that the judge ruled that she was mentally unwell when she did her will. And so he didn't eliminate it. He just reduced the that. gift to two million dollars and then gave the grandchildren six million to split and then gave the rest to charity, which I'm I think the bulk of her estate was going to I mean twelve million. She had billions. So I'm this is not Oh, oh yeah, you know, yeah. The twelve this million is not her entire estate. That's just the gift she left her dog. <laughs> so that was the easy part to attack. Yeah by the grandchildren. Well, that seems like a fairly fair result. I'm sure $2 million was enough for that dog. $2 million? I hope so. Even to cover a home in New York City. 
That's enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> enough to send them to college and grad school. Yeah. <laughs> to be a Dr. Maltese. A you. Dr. Maltese. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And another one that was fairly recent was uh, the fashion designer also, like Carl Lagerfeld, Alexander McQueen. Oh. He left about 82000 in U.S. dollars in trust for his pet dogs and then another 164000 to some animal charities. Oh, so he, nice. he made sure that they were taken care of. 82000 doesn't seem over the top for no. multiple dogs. Although sometimes with celebrities, I don't know what's liquid and what's not. So, I mean... With Alexander McQueen, because he's a, a designer, I don't know how much his name, image, likeness, future royalties, right. things like that, versus what he had in the bank. So, the bank. right, that, that can be That's true. So, the 82 could have been a big chunk of yeah, what he had liquid to give away. Yeah, all that income versus assets <laughs> questions, <laughs> right? Right, right. Yeah, so there's a couple of reported ones. I mean, Oprah's not dead. But she has <laughs> reportedly set aside $30 million for her dog's care. So, I mean, that's, I think she's got like three or four or did like little poodle mixes of some sort. But oh, I mean, that's. That's a lot. That is a lot. That's like, I want to maintain until the end of their lives, three of my homes. Yeah. So that my dogs can fly around the world, you know, stay in Montecito stay in wherever else i don't maui. know maui <laughs> to each his own but she could have just given everybody a dog for that she could just be you get a dog and you get a dog and you get a dog and you get 10 million dollars <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> yes and she has yeah. kids i mean she's got family that would take pets i'm sure so another big one that's purported right obviously she can change that she's still alive was and i don't i'm gonna assume i'm pronouncing this right but i don't know Majel. Barrett Roddenberry. She was the wife of the creator of Star Trek. So quite Gene a big estate. Yeah. yeah. She set up a $4 million trust fund for her dogs and a million dollars set aside for a domestic employee to care for them. So that is like the pet trust we talked about. So she's covering, you know, a million dollars for however many years of salary that is, or an outright gift for a domestic employee to take care of them. So that's... Well, they'll have a nice life. That's... Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Sometimes they, it would be a little bit better if you could find out what kind of dogs they were or, you know, all that mm -hmm. detail. Like, are they real fancy? They need a lot of grooming. You know, some of those <laughs> dogs, I can't even imagine what the grooming bill would be for those, hmm. like, a, like a Pekingese or well, they have like to have that. All the time. Yeah. And yeah. And like a brush every dog. day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is the new style. People get their dogs fur colored. Have you seen that? Oh. You'll see like a purple poodle. Or, you know, a blue Maltese and it's like a, it's like chalk, but it doesn't come off on your furniture. That's what I'd be terrified about. But yeah, they do that all the time now. It's very different. Or paint their nails with like a, some pet safe nail polish. Nail polish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could see that. I could see that. But yeah. I'm not sure about coloring their fur. I don't know. It's different. <laughs> um, and then the, the last one we have is Betty White reportedly set up a $5 million trust for her dog. So I presume that when they do that, it's so when the dog dies that they could leave the money to charity. And correct the money. Case, probably yeah. that's what would happen. To have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and she was very famously an animal lover and an animal yes. advocate. And so that's. Yeah. We'll, ha we'll have not. to keep you posted when we hear about Bob Barker's estate. <laughs> Did he have a lot of pets? No, but he famously was like, you know, spay and neuter. Oh, that was that's his true. thing. Yeah, that's true. That's so I imagine he would have left money to whatever his thing was, whether it be the SPCA or, yeah, you know, some charity, whoever well, sponsored that. And we might not ever find out, yeah. you know, if everything goes as we would hope, it will be private. That's, yes. that's the goal in the state plan. Yeah, if the estate plans are set up right, we shouldn't know anything. We shouldn't know anything other than this person died. Okay, well, let's go to our questions. I didn't say at the top of the, of the show that if you are watching live and you have questions, you can type them into the comment section. I think probably our viewers know that <laughs> by now, but it doesn't hurt to remind them. So I'm going to skim back and look for questions. Okay, so... Here's the question. What happens to a pet if the trustee or executor can't find anyone to take it? Yeah, that's a good question. And it's up to your trustee or executor. So it could be that they have to look for rescues. 
see if they can have it rehomed in in that way, like drop it off at a rescue that do that due diligence. If there is no provision or you don't have an estate plan or they can't find anybody, I mean, the only option would be the pound, which of course is not not the ideal option. Yeah. And not all pounds are no kill there. Right. And also it depends on what pet because some Mm. pets get adopted out really quick out of the pound and some do not. Like small dogs go fast. If you have a pity, that's not going to be a good option. Yeah. Yeah. Or they say black cats are the last to be adopted. So if you have a black cat, that can be more difficult. And I'm sure adult cats are different too. I mean, everybody wants a puppy and a kitten, right? Sure. Except for except for me, because I'm like, just give me one already trained. One that's trained. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And if there isn't a written authorization for the trustee or executor to give money along with the animal, they can't do it. They just got to find someone who'll take the animal for free. So that's an important point to consider. Okay. Yeah. All right. How can you make sure that the trustee of a pet trust is doing their job? Well, you could put that in the trust. I mean, I would hold them accountable in a regular trust that's leaving money to your children. The trustee has to provide accountings to those children. Obviously, having the trustee provide an accounting to your pet is not going to be helpful. That's not going to go anywhere. (laughs) Right. But you can make sure that they have to provide an accounting to somebody. It can be whomever you choose uh, just to keep them honest in that regard. I mean, you can do that at any time, regardless of the type of trust, but you would want to certainly want to add somebody into a pet trust. Right. And I mean, that's always part of the special needs trust that we write for our clients is, you know, if we have a beneficiary who's not going to be able to read and understand their accounting, we need to have somebody else who will, you know, keep an eye on the trustee. Yeah. I mean, they just changed the law for if, if the trust or becomes incapacitated, they have to provide the accounting to the subsequent beneficiaries because providing right. an accounting to an incapacitated beneficiary is moot. The same as the the yeah. Accounting. yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually the California statute allows, the pet trust statute allows a broad range of, you know, interested people to bring a petition in court and hold the trustee accountable for their actions. Normally, you know, the people who are allowed to do that are basically the beneficiaries, the people who have some interest in the trust. But with a pet trust, it could be any charitable organization that's mission is to take care of animals. And it's a broad range of people who can just come to the court and say, hey, I'm worried about this animal or I'm worried that this trustee isn't spending the money correctly on this animal. So that makes the pet trust different from other trusts. Yeah. Anytime you have to be beholden to PETA, you know, that that would inspire you to fly straight in that yeah. regard. Yeah, it might be hard to get their attention if we're just talking about a koi fish, but yeah, <laughs> but that's an important point. Madison, any final words about planning for your pets? Yeah, I think everyone should take a look at what pets they have. I mean, I obviously am not too worried about planning for my pets right now. I'm pretty sure I'm going to outlive them. But I'm pretty sure I'm never going to be without a pet. So that's something that I have to plan for. But it can be so much as researching rescues in your area. Like I've heard of rescues that will just take your animal. Like there are plenty of rescues if you have a horse that just put your horse at the pasture and take care of them. It's not like they just immediately adopt it out to a private citizen. It's like, you know, an old folks home for pets. And they there are people and it for other breeds, other species too, you know, cats, dogs. but you have to decide what you want. You have to look at if you have multiple pets, do you want them to all have to stay together? Or is there a good break? Like we were talking about your cats, there's a good break that, you know, no one's gonna be heartbroken if you split them a certain way. So those are things that everybody should consider. We suggest people with children and special needs children to write letters about how their children are, it would be a good idea to have some sort of information about your animal, whether it be an ongoing medical condition, a personality trait or disorder, depending on what type of animal you have, <laughs> um, you know, things like that, you know, so that your trustee has a good place to start if you're, you know, not giving direct instructions in that regard. But I mean, it would help them rehome. You know, the, the whole goal is to make things as easy as possible on your trustee, I think. Right. Yeah, I, I do like that. Uh, that idea of leaving behind a a side letter, you know, that just talks about the 
peculiarities of your pets. Then. Yeah. We each have a pet that we would say, don't let them free eat. <laughs> right. Don't, don't leave the bowl of food out for them 24 seven. Or if there's multiples, you got to feed them separate. You you know? feed them separate. Yeah. yeah. Or there's going to be a health issue or, you know, whatever the case may be. This one likes this toy. It's got emotional support stuffy, you know, some, you know, little things like that. We know about our pets, but we don't always share it. Right. Right. Although you and I do. Well, yeah. <laughs> We know too much, probably. I know um, talking about work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's more fun than talking about work. All right. Well, thanks, Madison. And thank you all for joining us. I hope you maybe learned something and had a little bit of fun today. Um, we look forward to connecting with you next time. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of Absolute Trust Talk Live. If you enjoyed listening in, then don't forget to subscribe. You can find us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you may listen by searching Absolute Trust Talk. While you're there, we would also love for you to leave us a review. And then why not share your favorite episodes with family, friends, or colleagues too? You can find all of our shows and corresponding show notes by visiting AbsoluteTrustCouncil.com. You'll also find a variety of other free resources, including our eBooks, videos, blogs, presentations, and more. If you need help with your estate planning or administration, we also offer a free discovery call to help get the process started. You can find more information on booking your session by visiting absolutetrustcouncil.com slash scheduling. If you join us for the broadcast, you can submit questions during the show, but if not, don't worry. You can always get in touch with us by sending a quick message to info at absolutetrustcouncil.com. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you soon. This podcast is not meant to take place of legal advice from an attorney and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you do have a legal question or issue, please consult with an attorney.